Today, we're going to critique a video called The Myth of Bad Food. Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with a little bit of a, I guess it's a low carb uh, keto carnivore video, but we're going to critique a video together. And it's from uh, filmmaker Matt Devella. I believe that's his name, Devella. He's a pretty uh, popular YouTube guy and he's an exceptional filmmaker. I like the, his work a lot. I wish I had the time and skills that he does. Um, and he's made a lot of uh, interesting videos, a lot about minimalism and all sorts of stuff. And the guy's on the younger side, I believe <clears throat> he may be in his 20s. I think he's a millennial. He looks like a really nice guy and, and he, he tends to be very thoughtful in what he does. So, um, what I'm going to do today is I watched his video called The Myth of Bad Food and he had a, I guess a bodybuilder guy, uh, fitness uh, deadlifting uh, competition. They're talking about food and guilt and all this other stuff. So we're going to go step by step through this eight minute video together and I'm going to stop the video. I may speed up his video uh, in between points just to make it a little bit easier for us to watch, <clears throat> but I'm going to stop the video and offer my commentary. I'm going to shrink myself down into the corner so we can uh, uh, so you can watch the video and I may bring myself back up when I have commentary and blur the screen out in the background and I'll reduce myself back down to small and play his video in between sections of comment. So let's get started here with the myth of bad food. Okay? When we talk about food, it's usually in absolutes. There's good food and bad food. Spinach is good for you. Milk is bad for you. Quinoa is good for you. Gluten is going to kill you in your sleep. Could it possibly be this simple? See, let me explain. Is it possible this simple? They're talking about like things that are popular, things that aren't, and I, I guess he's just randomly cherry picking things to, but there are good foods and bad foods. I just, you need to know that. Or are we missing something when we talk about food? As unhealthy as the American diet has become, presently 62% of adults are overweight or obese. Our relationship with dieting is just as unhealthy. Take for instance. By the way, that bar he ate, bad, high carb. It's one survey by the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill that found that 75% of American women say that they endorse some unhealthy thoughts, feelings, or behaviors related to food or their bodies. Food can be a source of pleasure. Yeah, that, that women have a problem with that, and that's not because it's food. It's because of social images and so on, and social media in particular. Uh, there's a lot of false ideas going back and forth. Joy, and it can help bring people together. By the way, speaking of uh, bringing together, uh, I've talked about how uh, eating at restaurants uh, does not have to be, it's not like you killed a, a bison out in the wilderness and you and your cavemen buddies are eating. It's totally different in 2019. Or it can be a place of shame, guilt, and remorse. And, and yes, one donut leads to the next donut and it will eventually kill you because you can't break the donut habit. Jordan Syatt is a world record power lifter and strength coach. Today he trains entrepreneurs like Gary Vee and helps people create a better relationship with food. I sat down with him to talk about how we can make progress to not only live healthier lives, but to also enjoy food without guilt. Okay, before he starts his interview, you need to understand there's a huge difference between people who expend a whole lot of energy with lifting weights and, and, and training, it's a completely, completely different scenario because they, they have a lot more flexibility in terms of what they can eat. But it's important that we say that even if they're eating their donuts and their sugar and they burn off all their calories and, and you know, have incredible muscle mass, that, that just gives them like a hidden passport to be able to eat these things. Um, but they're still doing damage to their body internally and mentally. Just because they look good physically does not mean they are healthy. Let's see what they have to say. I love to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. yeah. And <laughs> I would love to say that we could just create these two separate categories of good and bad food. But would you say that that's just a complete oversimplification of food? It's a massive oversimplification and it's, it's a marketing tactic. It's almost like when you... Let me explain. It is a massive um, simplification, but it's absolutely true. There is good food and bad food and it there's no there's no arguing that um, 
perhaps when you're like a, a high intensity uh, lifter like this guy, maybe there isn't physically appearing good food and bad food like when you're not lifting. But I'm telling you right now, they're, they're selling you the wrong idea here, watch. Look on Instagram, you have like the green checks and the red X's. I work with a lot of people who struggle with food anxiety and with binge eating. And first and foremost, more people struggle with binge eating than they would like to admit. By the way, binge eating is caused because you raise your blood sugar and you can't stop eating. It's simple, it's been proven, and, and there's no arguing that. And one of the first things I like to say is if you struggle with binge eating, if you struggle with food anxiety, if you know going out to dinner with friends or family on Friday night is almost anxiety producing because you don't want to ruin all your progress, the first thing I say is you're not alone because a lot of people struggle with it, but very few people actually discuss it. Right, you're not alone doesn't make it good, FYI. Uh, it shouldn't make you feel better that you're not alone. And don't go out to eat. We've told people this in the past. Going out to eat with friends and family on a Friday night shouldn't be um, a, a requirement. Don't go out to eat if, it, if you have a problem with it. And by the way, if you're low carb and keto or carnivore, you won't want to eat. I mean, like restaurants don't have to be this part of your life. And, and the way they're talking about it as if it's a given is a big mistake because you don't have to go to a restaurant. From that point, when we place a morality on food, whether food is good or bad, right or wrong, you're setting yourself up for more food anxiety. When you say ice cream is inherently bad, when you say pizza is inherently bad, when you go out to eat with your friends and family and there's ice cream or pizza, you're gonna more likely to get anxiety about it. No, not true. Yes, food is good and bad. Things that are available today in 2019 in mass, like bananas all year round from all over the world and other inflammatory foods like, uh, like all these grains and, and greens that people are eating that are actually causing pain in your body. Um, it, it's just, it, and like they're showing bread here and they're talking about guilt. Again, you gotta remember, these guys have a little bit of a passport to eating bad that would normally be, um, and it doesn't affect them personally or I mean physically, but other people, and they're, they're basically making it okay to have your burger and they're gonna eat a burger later in the video, you watch, or a, a donut or a 50 gram of carb energy bar, bad. And, and they can't, just cause they're in shape and eating it doesn't, they're sending the wrong message and this is a disservice to many other people. Yes, both are inherently bad. They're high in sugar and high in carbs, period. You shouldn't eat them. You'll get anxiety about eating ice cream and pizza when you feel a stomach ache afterward. It's, there's no problem. Uh, you just have to get through the initial period of not wanting, and then you're gonna realize over time, as, as you eat your meat and your eggs and your cheese, you're gonna realize, I don't want that in my body. I don't care how good it tastes on my tongue and in my mouth. The after effects, I don't want it. You, you start seeing cake and pizza and cookies as poison. It, it's, it's a fantastic level to reach, by the way. Because you think you're doing something bad, but when we understand that our health isn't made up by one meal or one bite. You know, no, one, no one got fat from having one donut, just like no one got skinny from having one salad. No one lost all their progress by missing one workout. No one got jacked and shredded by having one amazing workout. It's our health is dictated by it. See, what he's doing here by, by using this simple comparison of, oh, it's only one bad workout or one great workout, I, I think he's, he's missing, missing the point that Sure, uh, working out, it can be a long-term thing and missing a workout is not a big deal unless you're in a competition or you have to make gains within a set period of time. But the food slippery slope is absolutely something that you're gonna realize later on in life is not a good thing because slipping sucks. Because if you're doing low carb and you're on a nice roll um, and you're just feeling great, Eating a white bread Italian hoagie can set you back not just a week in, in making gains if you're at that initial stage where you're making really good downward progress, but it also can make you feel pain for several days, three days at least. You're gonna feel sick, you might have bowel issues. He's putting too much, he's making it too, he's oversimplifying these uh, big solutions. 
everything we do over time. And the more we can realize that one meal isn't good or bad, one meal isn't right or wrong, the less anxiety we're gonna have with food, which is really what my main goal is, to have a healthier relationship with food. See there, I have to say he's wrong again. He's basically letting people make an excuse. Oh, it was only one. It was only one donut or only one pizza pie I ate before the first quarter was over in the stupid game I was watching. He's giving people an, an easy out to say, oh, I'll just do it next week. Oh, I'll recover. You don't want to make these mistakes with donuts and crappy processed foods. So great, we can eat whatever we want, whenever we want, and there will be no negative outcomes for our health because there are no good or bad foods. Except, not exactly. Changing how we look and talk about food doesn't mean that we're magically changing the nutritional components. So what does it mean? And this is one of the main arguments that people will use when they go against what I'm saying. Like, oh really, so you're just saying like you should have Pop-Tarts and pizza and, and candy for every meal? I'm like, no, just because there's no such thing as a good or bad food, does not mean I'm saying go eat whatever you want. Like that's not what I'm saying. So what he's saying is basically two separate things. He's, he's saying something that sounds like a good sound bite for this interview and then he's saying it's not good. See, I, I really don't like this. What I'm saying is don't place a morality on it. Don't shame yourself if you decide to, at your son's birthday party, have a slice of pizza. It's okay. By the way, there they go. They're throwing in an emotional hook in there. Oh, your son's birthday. Having a slice of pizza on your, at your son's birthday party, doesn't it change the experience for your son, okay? He doesn't give a crap what you eat. You don't have some sort of bonding, like you're like putting your uh, you know, blood brothers and uh, everybody has to shed blood to, to, no. You do not have to, to do what everybody else is doing at a birthday party, eating ice cream cake and pizza and cookies. See, that, he, he's trying to say, oh, at every good, good event, and you're gonna find yourself at happy events every week. Oh, it was a Fran's birthday over at the office. They had cake. Oh, it's my son's, uh, he won last pay, place tro trophy in Little League. We gotta have pizza. You know, it's a bad precedent to set. You don't wanna do it. Don't feel guilt about what you eat at somebody else's party, even if it is your own son. But that doesn't mean I'm saying eat pizza for every meal. Like, generally speaking, to be a healthy individual and maintain a healthier body weight and have a healthier mindset, like, yeah, minimally processed, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, lean proteins, that should make up the majority of your diet. He's wrong again. Uh, I mean, he, he's sort of right, but, but fruits and vegetables, generally, uh, you're gonna be really uh, sl making slow progress on that. And his idea of lean proteins may only really work when you're like a, a, a higher end bodybuilder, but you still need, you need fat. Most of the time, don't eat like an asshole. When you do eat like an asshole, don't treat yourself like an asshole. I think a lot of times too, like we need to think about what our goals are from the beginning. Cause it's very easy to just follow trend. I, I hate this. This is uh, an attitude a lot of the younger people are having where they have almost have this the, the moral superiority over it. Oh yeah, I, I can have it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like an ego thing where they refuse to admit they're wrong. And 80-20 sucks. If you're gonna do anything, make it 99.9 .9 and .01. You really don't wanna mess up because as you go on a, a, a nice streak of feeling great and no pains, no sickness, no anxiety, no skin problems, and you eat that horrible thing, you're just not gonna wanna do it anymore. So his 80-20 rule just, you're gonna be in the, in the swamp of suck for, for a long time until you figure out what I'm telling you right now. But we're so individual. And it's like, do you want to gain strength? Or do you want to focus on your body? Do you want to get lean, right. cut? What is it? And I think if we focus on those things first, then we can figure out maybe what's the, the best kind of lifestyle to live, what kind of food we should be eating. Again, like there, he didn't really say anything right there, what food you should be eating. It's proven and it's, it's a guaranteed fact if you go carnivore, or at the very least, if a very low carb diet, or and I'm not a big fan, I put keto in the, in the description just to hopefully attract some people who, who type keto as a keyword. It really should be a carnivore slash low carb. Um, he, he really said nothing. There's really only, honest to God, one way to have the best diet, and that is carnivore. The health and fitness community can be a confusing place to navigate. It's overloaded with opinions, pseudoscience, and proclaimed experts. While there's a wealth of helpful knowledge, it can be difficult to discern what's best for you. By the way, those smoothies he eats with tons of vegetables, 
you're, that's like the worst thing. Never drink one of these veggie smoothies and with, with 9,000 different ingredients in it. It's a calorie-packed nightmare. And the truth is, it really depends where you're at on your own fitness journey. One of my favorite examples of this, for one person, progress might be saying no to the donut because it's gonna help them stay on track. It's gonna help them eat fewer calories and that's gonna help them lose weight, which is what their goal is. For another person though, FYI, the calories don't matter. I've told people this before. It's the carbohydrate uh, content that counts. Uh, you know, I can eat five pounds of meat in a day or I can eat a pound of meat a day. My weight stays the same uh, or goes down. Um, sometimes your body just wants protein when you've been particularly active, you'll, you'll naturally feel hungry or if you've been a little bit more sedentary, your, your appetite isn't there. That's the beauty of a carnivore diet. Progress might be saying yes to the donut because now they can eat it without anxiety. Because I think a lot of people only look at progress from a physical perspective like fat loss. By the way, I see a lot of people that eat donuts without anxiety. They're like 900 pounds and they don't give a crap. I suppose when they're uh, uh, meeting their maker, they might say, ah, I guess the donuts weren't worth it. Muscle gain, but mental progress is huge. Mental health is massively important and it's seriously under discussed, especially in fitness. And for me, if someone can have a donut without leading to a further binge and or have a donut without shaming themselves and feeling guilty and just driving themselves in the ground, feeling like lesser person, like they failed, that's also huge progress. It's pro by the way, if you eat a donut, you failed. You made no progress, you ate crap. Crap food that, that satiated this pleasure center in your body and you got nothing from it. You got 30 seconds of pleasure and, you, and you, there's no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Probably better, right, to make the decision consciously than to slip up and, and make mistakes and then, or see them as mistakes. If we say, okay, I'm gonna go out and, and have a burger tonight, then we can feel better about that experience. A lot of people, they'll go get the burger. I don't understand. These younger people, they just, they're, they're overcomplicating. They think they're like all religiously or psych, you know, they're like little mini psychiatrists. They've crafted a way to become uh, at ease when they know deep inside it's wrong. They're, they're, this is just fluff to be okay with being wrong because they're weak and they can't handle the, uh, the importance of not eating these stupid bread uh, sandwiches and then 9,000 carb uh, smoothies. They, they have no idea. I, they'll wake up one day. But every bite, they're like, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing this. And they feel terrible about it and they can't even enjoy it. The funny thing is they're, they're telling themselves that they feel terrible, but they keep eating each bite. Why? Because it's addictive. The blood sugar raising bread in that burger is just, it's, it turns off their logic. You can't control it at that point. When you're eating that delicious burger and you're feeling guilty about it and you keep eating, then what, what's the point of feeling guilty? You just don't eat the crap. And then when they're done, they feel so bad. They're like, well, I screwed everything up, so screw it. And then they get the ice cream and then they have a whole box of cinnamon toast crunch. And then they have, it's like, what if you just enjoyed the burger? You'll still get the ice cream and the cinnamon toast crunch if you enjoy the, the burger. That's the problem. See, this guy, is, he's, he's, he's word salad. He is a word salad. What if you just enjoyed the burger? When you first get in there, here comes the slow motion. It's almost like a Burger King commercial or some sort of a burger joint commercial where they zoom in and they show the pleasure. Watch their eyes. The pleasure of eating that burger. You know how many people went out and ate a burger with no guilt after this and now they're like 10 pounds heavier? Forget about it. Healthy eating, it can be very easy to place large red X's on some foods and green check marks on the others. FYI, why are they, see, you could tell they're from a younger generation because they're using these stupid, simple caveman hieroglyphics of check marks and X's from Instagram. Stop reading Instagram. But this might not be the best long-term approach, especially if your goal isn't to just shed excess fat, but to instead rediscover a love of food without shame or guilt. As long as we're giving our body the nutrients it needs most of the time. By the way, a nice juicy steak or some nice rare ground beef has more vitamins and minerals than a giant bowl of these quinoa salads that these dopes eat and then they eat too much fiber and it rushes the nutrients through their body too fast so they don't even get 
the benefit of having those nutrients. As Jordan said, focusing on eating less processed foods, more fruits, more... We agree with less processed, but you got to be careful because the fruits and vegetables out there are also not meant to be eaten in mass quantities by human beings. It's this industrialized nation that we live in now, and we can get fr uh, fruit and vegetables from all over the world. And that's why we're having a problem with overeating things that really weren't uh, made by Mother Nature to be overeaten. More vegetables and more lean protein. We can indulge ourselves every once in a while. We can eat guilt-free while on vacation. We can kick our feet up and have a few beers. After all, life can be pretty damn boring if we don't break our own rules from time to time. By the way, you, you can have a very unboring life and it doesn't have to involve complex food rituals and dishes and all sorts of uh, selfies of taking pictures of your food. It does not have to be that way. But these people have it programmed in their mind that that's what life is all about, having all these, uh, these interwoven food moments. Are burgers good for you? Well, they taste pretty good. And for this meal, that's good enough for me. Okay, that, that was the end of the Matt's video. And I... He, I like, he, I think he's a very good filmmaker, but his script and the ideas behind this particular video were very, very wrong and misleading. And uh, I think a lot of people are going to take it hook, line, and sinker and say, oh, I can be, I can be okay. And they're going to realize, or maybe never realize that a, a year or two or five later, they're going to say, man, I didn't make any change. That guy, Matt, was wrong. He, he better uh, revise his video. And, and, and his, com his concepts. There are good and bad foods. The best foods are, are meat, animal-based products, and uh, no processed foods at all, and no heavy, uh, high glycemic uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, fruit in general, like we said in the past, uh, a blueberry here and there, but th there's really no need for it. Just drink your water, eat your meat, and you will be fine. So that's it. I, I hope you uh, enjoy my critique. And if you have uh, any problems with what I said, uh, that's fine. I, I, I don't mind. You can disagree with me. But I think he's wrong and he has a lot of experience to go. You don't just experience life uh, going on Instagram and uh, working out a little and feeling good. Some people are genetically predisposed for having a pretty decent body and eating whatever they want. But they run into big problems later on in life internally. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, all that stuff.